right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Auditorium Bible Class today here at South Haven Baptist Church. Hopefully you had a great day yesterday. Man, the weather was nice. It felt very springy, and we have another nice day today to come and worship the Lord. I'd like to welcome everyone uh, watching on live stream. Thank you for tuning in today, and we're going to go ahead and stand and sing a couple songs. Brother Paul. All right, let's go ahead and stand. God so loved the world. Here we go. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free. Someday he's coming back. What a glory that will be. What The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it that others may know. Tell of his blessings and tell of his love. Tell how he's coming from heaven above. The on the road, got them safely here, just help us to have a good turnout today, and not just for numbers, but for people to hear your preached word, Lord, and we just pray that you'll uh, be with the pastor as he speaks, be with all the Sunday school teachers as they speak this morning, and just uh, guide their tongues, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you, Brother Paul, you may be seated. All right, hopefully you had a great week, and God blessed. Somebody have something you're thankful for this morning. Let's do something a little different. Are you thankful for anything this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. Right. But home. That's a blessing. That is a true blessing. All right. Something you're thankful. Yes, ma'am. Oh. What? Is that right? Okay. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But a blessing. Same day. That is awesome. That's awesome. All right. Something else you're thankful for. Yes, ma'am. That's a blessing. That is a blessing. They're thankful for their grandkids coming home. From the hospital and thankful that uh, grandson was born on her great grandson born on her birthday. So that's a special thing, special thing. All right. Yes, sir. All right. New great granddaughter and just uh, Friday. All right. That's Michael and Kelly's. Absolutely. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. All right. Yes, ma'am. Goodness of God. Yes, Dad got a good report. Had his uh, procedure this week and got a good report. And uh, so that's a blessing. That's a blessing. All right, anything else? Yes, sir. I want to go way back. Way back. And you can. You can go way back. <laughs> yes. So how was it back then? Was it? <laughs> uh, way back. All right. Yes. You know, and that's true. You just walk around and you see everything that God, God has created. And then you say, people say it just happened. How in the world could it just happen? Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. There is a creator, and we're thankful we know him. 
Amen. All right, anything else? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Miss Love, go ahead. Yes. Great Shepherd, yes. Amen. Amen. Church family and pastor. And uh, we are blessed. We are blessed and so thankful for that. Anyone else before we, we move on? All right. God is good, isn't he? God is good and uh, all the time. That is true. We had, uh, you know, sometimes you have maybe a bad week or something and a little rough. And uh, one of the teachers came to me this week and said, hey, just want to let you know one of the students accepted Christ uh, in Bible class. And then another one, uh, they're going to be baptized uh, going on. So there's a lot of things that sometimes you say, oh, you know, the busyness or things going on. But God always has something for us. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, it's good to have new windows, isn't it? Good to have new windows. Like to open them. This is a great time to open them and get some of that fresh air. So very good. Well, we've got some things going on this week. And so just a couple of announcements. Uh, the bus ministry tonight after the evening service, they will have their monthly um, bus meeting and kind of snacks and things. So if you're interested in maybe helping with the bus ministry, you are welcome to do that tonight after the service. The ladies ministry uh, is hosting a yard sale on Saturday. It'll be from 7 to 2. And so if you'd like to uh, come out and be a part of that, you can see Cindy Norton. And uh, if you don't have something to sell, I'm sure you, there's something to buy. All right, there's always something to buy to add to what you already have. All right, um, boot camp Sunday is uh, April the 28th, April the 28th, and uh, that'll be a great time for the kids. So some of the grandkids might be interested in coming to that and have a good time. And then our nursery ministry is growing, and we need some more volunteers, so if you're interested, Please come uh, talk to uh, Frankie Gagliano or Sarah Gagliano, and that would be a great uh, help there. And then uh, Journey to Recovery, uh, every uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and uh, we have a program for children and also uh, for adults. And so if you know someone or if you'd like to just get in there and get closer to God and, uh, and to the Lord, and just a great program, Brother Johnny runs that. Good to see you this morning, Brother Johnny. Glad you come visit us today. All right. He's feeling his age today. He's coming on in with us. Thank you, Brother Johnny. All right. But a great program on Wednesday nights, and so you want to come. Uh, or if you know someone that would be interested in that. And then Friend Sunday. It's not too early to start thinking about Friend Sunday. May the 5th. We are halfway through the month. Is that possible? We're halfway through April. Seems like it was just April Fool's Day. And here we are already on the 14th. So uh, on May the 5th, Friend Day, uh, this is a great opportunity to get folks to come in. We have a huge crowd on Friend Day, and uh, they get a free meal. Not you, but your friend would get a free meal, and, uh, but they have great food, and the Spanish department puts that on for us. So come and invite folks to that. I'm looking here make sure I get all of it. All right, here we go. Birthdays. Bill Hogan. Does Bill Hogan come in? Bill, you're in the security. Happy birthday to you. All right. So, Bill, he's out there. I'm sure he's listening. And Dennis Beam has a birthday. Is Dennis in here? Dennis is not in here. But I did see the Stevens. Did I not? I'm looking. No. No, I don't see the Stevens here today. All right. So, everybody took a... They took an anniversary trip. I'm sure that's what it was. That's how it usually goes. And if they're watching on live stream, happy anniversary. And then Dennis Beam, I'm sure he's out there. He's always uh, working and getting things together. And then Bill is on security. So they have a birthday this week. I think uh, Bill's is today. Bill's today. How old is Bill? Miss Hogan, how old is your husband? 57. All right, Bill looks very young. He's a young, he has low mileage. Bill's low mileage, and uh, but now uh, Bill does a great job. He helps us with security, and uh, we're glad for the Hogans. 
And then uh, Dennis, he does a lot of work around here. He's always, I mean, you watch him, he's always working, picking stuff up, picking the trash up. He's always doing something. And then we're glad for the Stevens family. And uh, I know that uh, they would have been here if they could this morning. All right, let's see. Do we have Brother David? Well, no, let's, we're, we're going to save that testimony. We're going to do prayer requests. And then we're going to do your testimony, yes? Yes, okay. Come on up, Brother Bob. And we'll take some prayer requests. Oh, I can tell it's going to be a great day. I got a phone call last night from Caldwell, Idaho. Who in the world? That's where I grew up. They said, Do you know who this is? I said, I don't have a clue. Dwayne Merritt. It's a good, one of my classmates graduated in 1958. He said, I'm in Nashville. I'd like to get together with you sometime this week. So we're supposed to meet. You're supposed to come over to my house Monday. So I'm excited. I'm excited about all these prayer requests I got this morning. Everybody's doing a good job, and I really appreciate that. Going to give Debbie's first. That baby is huge. Ten pounds? Uh, whew, goodness, goodness, goodness. He looked healthy. And I'm sure these antibiotics that he's taken will we'll get him out of the hospital soon. And then I uh, want to remember to pray for Earl Williams. Uh, he's uh, doing well. Hopefully he'll get to come home tomorrow. Uh, Shirley Bellamy has passed away. Let's remember to pray for her family. Uh, Ruby is going to the hospital tomorrow to have surgery on her other uh, shoulder. And then pray for Katie Janice. Oh, they haven't been here in quite some time, but they're praying that she will be able to be here uh, Mother's Day. And then uh, Louis Kleiner, we've been missing him lately. Let's pray that uh, he would be encouraged and help, let us give him a call, try to encourage him. And LaShanna Williams uh, broke, broke her ankle, so we need to pray for healing there. And then Janet Beam, uh, it, as we mentioned last week, had a torn meniscus on her left knee, and she's having surgery scheduled for May 17th, which is this Wednesday. So, is when? You're right. I, I don't read well, mainly because I don't see well. Anyone else has a prayer request this morning? that covers everything all right let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer father in heaven we thank you that we can gather together we thank you for the sunshine that we have and the beautiful country that we live in we thank you for the freedom that we have we think of Israel this morning and father we pray that you would uh, just be with the situations there father we know that you're in control and help us to trust in you in these matters Pray that you be with these requests in a special way this morning. Pray that you heal those that have needs. Pray that you be with those that uh, are struggling with uh, depression and, and incur dis discouragement. Father, I pray that today that we would receive encouragement from you in our Sunday school lesson, in our message that our, that our pastor has for us. We pray, Father, that you just work in this, in this group of people today. 
we see people visiting that need to become members. And Father, I pray that you'd work in their hearts today and have uh, more people join this, this ministry. We love you. We thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for the way that you have blessed us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bob. All right, we're glad to have Brother Riddick to come on up. He's going to give his testimony. Got to eat Easter uh, lunch with uh, the Riddicks. Had a great time, and uh, he uh, enjoyed those lamb ribs. Never had those before, but we tried those, uh, and it's okay to try something once. All right, one time. So, Brother David, give your testimony. Thank you. I never could afford lamb. I had to go there with Dr. Blazer and Dr. Blazer <laughs> to be able to, to have, uh, have lamb chops, but they were delicious. Uh, I've been saved for 66 years. Pardon? I got saved when I was minus three, yeah. Um, my dad uh, uh, was an alcoholic. I'm telling you this backstory to tell you it's, it's, it's only by God's grace that I'm here today. And um, he came out of the service. He got wounded in the Second World War in Belgium. and um, He was industrious. He bought a gas station on the state line of Missouri and Arkansas. And he bootlegged cigarettes by the trailer load. I guess there was a tax difference or something between the two states and uh, antifreeze he sold antifreeze it wasn't really antifreeze I guess anyway he made a lot of money but he drank it all up and um, uh, my mother went to Baptist Church in Steele Missouri most of you I know somebody here brother Greg knows where that is but probably most of you never heard of Steele Missouri before it's down in the right lower corner of the boot hill of Missouri they call it my mother got saved. <clears throat> Dad wasn't having any part of it. And uh, I think she was getting ready to leave him. And uh, this was before I was ever even born. Probably my older brother also. And uh, finally she convinced him to go to church. They went a couple of services and my dad got saved. He gave his service station business to a man who worked for him. He gave it to him. He said, I can't do this and be a Christian. And the Lord called my dad to preach. He pastored over 20 years between Arkansas and, and Ohio. <clears throat> but I remember one day when he was in Bible college in Little Rock, Arkansas, I was standing next to my mom in, in church in the invitation and I uh, reached over and I said, Mother, I'm lost. I need to be saved. I was six. She thought I was too young. She knew I wasn't very smart. So I think she thought I was confused probably. And uh, she said, we'll talk to your dad when we get home. I, mean, I couldn't stand it. I, I couldn't wait. I, it was killing me. That's the way we ought to feel when we get saved. So we got home, and uh, we knelt there by the, by the couch in the living room. I could almost see it today, and I'm sure the house is not standing because it was a church parsonage, and it was barely standing then. <laughs> and that was 66 years ago. And I prayed and asked the Lord to save me. My brother was hiding in the restroom, in the bathroom, and my dad called him out. He heard what was going on. He said, did you, did you hear what just happened with David? And uh, he started crying, and my brother was saved the same day. He was 11, I believe, at the time. And uh, so when my dad, while he was in Bible college, he pastored, and then after he got out of Bible college, he, he, seminary, he pastored 
there in Arkansas, and then we moved to Ohio when I was uh, 11 years old. I was in the seventh grade. I started school when I was five. We didn't have kindergarten back in those days. And uh, I, I just was, I was just really discouraged. You know, I'd, 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 same group of friends I had growing up, you know, when I was a little kid and everything. And, and um, I asked my mom, I said, why, why at this stage in, my, in dad's life has he decided to move us from Arkansas to Ohio? There's a bunch of Yankees up there. And uh, Amen. she said, your dad's only 47. I said, that's old. Yeah. When you were 11, didn't you think 47 was pretty old? Yeah. And uh, we moved up there and found out that the people that, in our church and the people in that area uh, had all come out of the coal mines of Kentucky to work in the factories in Ohio, and they talked worse than we did. I remember one of the deacons saying the day we moved in, he said, uh, my dad said, let me take you fellas out. They helped us unload us what little bit we had in a U-Haul. And... Uh, uh, this deacon said, uh, uh, Pastor, don't worry about that. The women will be here with the food in about an hour. And when he said that, I started laughing out loud upstairs. And my mom, shh, 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 shh. I said, he's just making fun of us. She said, that may be the way he talks. I said, not no how, no way. It was. It was the way he talked. And so uh, we grew up there, served in the church there. But there was a time in my life where I got away from the Lord. I'm sorry to say. You know, sometimes church people can be the meanest people in the world. Isn't that a shame? They can hurt a kid. They can discourage you. And uh, you don't have to let them, but I did. And I got away from the Lord. And uh, I would tell you that today... I'm more thankful for my salvation than I ever have been. Uh, like I said, I've not always acted like his child, but I've always been his child because the Bible teaches us that once we're saved, we're always saved. Amen. It's one of the greatest doctrines in the Bible, in my opinion, is eternal security for the believer. And uh, uh, because of sin... God put some scars in my life. You know, God forgives us of our sin. And he forgives us like Pastor says, just, just like that. Not like we forgive. No conditions. God forgives us. But he leaves scars. He leaves scars that reminds us of the price of sin for a child of God. But I'm thankful he loved me. He saved me. Saved my wife, my children, my grandchildren. He's been awful good to me. My favorite verse in the Bible is the, is the verse that pretty much everybody knows, and you could all quote it. Matter of fact, I wish you'd quote it with me. It's John 3.16. For God yeah, so loved, loved the world, the world that, that he gave his, his only, only begotten, begotten Son, son that, that whosoever believeth believe in him should, should not perish, perish but have everlasting life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brother Dave. That's, uh, they've been in the church a couple years. Been here a couple years? In August. And uh, been a blessing to the church and blessing to get to know them. And uh, so we thought we'd give have his testimony. Yesterday he was sick in bed. His back was killing him, and uh, he didn't know if he's going to make it here today. But are uh, you feeling better today, Brother Dave? Good. I'm glad. All right, good. Well, we're in uh, Revelation chapter number 5 today, and uh, <clears throat> uh, we're talking about uh, worship. And so in, uh, uh, in uh, John the Apostle's uh, vision, he's seen... Uh, of course, Jesus on the throne, or God on the throne, Jesus is there, Jesus talking to him, and uh, in chapter 5, we see uh, why we should worship him. So we're going to spend a little time there today, <clears throat> if I can talk, uh, uh, yeah. and so uh, my wife always says, you got to 
you got to cough real loud, but you don't want me to do that, all right, and, uh, <coughs> and get that done. But Revelation chapter 5, let me read a couple verses, and uh, then we'll get into the lesson. This has been great, and we're praying for all these uh, uh, requests and all these things going on. Brother Earl's doing well. He thought he'd get to come home yesterday, and uh, you know, we always want to come home early, I guess, but he was doing well, but they decided to keep him. He might come home today or tomorrow. And so pray for him, pray for Ruby tomorrow, and uh, she has her other shoulder to be uh, replaced, I think, is that what they do, They're replacing it, and uh, she went through quite a bit of pain on the other one, but I told her she's an expert now, so she knows all about, she can tell the, she can tell the doctor just what to do, you know, say, now this is how you do it, and uh, got it figured out, but pray for her tomorrow, and uh, these other requests pray for each one and uh, the Bellamy family pray for them also all right uh, chapter 5 verse 1 and I saw in the in the right hand of him that sat on the throne who's on the throne what do you think uh, well God's on the throne and uh, a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy of to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereupon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of uh, the elders stood the Lamb. Notice capital L, the Lamb. Who's that? What do you think? Jesus, of course. As it has been uh, slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So there's a picture. The picture is God's on the throne. God the Father's on the throne and uh, has, a, has a book, probably a scroll uh, rolled up, has seven seals on it. Uh, you know, the seals, what they would use and the, the kings would use. And back in those days, they'd put uh, hot wax they roll it up and put hot wax on there, and then they had a seal. They had, and they would stamp it, and it would have the insignia of uh, the person doing it, the authority. Well, there's seven of them on there, and uh, they want to open the book. And uh, in, in verse four it says, "I wept much." That's the apostle John seeing this, and he said, "Nobody can open the book. Who can open the book?" And they looked all over heaven, they looked all over the earth, and they said they looked under the earth. Uh, and uh, I don't know where that is exactly, but they looked under the earth, and they, they couldn't find anyone anywhere who could open the book. And uh, then uh, he beheld, in the, lo, in the midst of the throne, in the four beasts, there's the Lamb, that's Jesus Christ, who has the authority to open the book. Well, he does, has all authority. It says in uh, Matthew chapter 28, and verse 18, all power is given me in heaven and earth. Oh, well, the power there, the authority, all power, and all authority is given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he has the authority to open the book. Now, what is the book? Well, in your lesson, if you look on the other side, the front side, maybe if you say uh, you know, at the bottom there, I listed a few things that maybe we should know or we can think about. It says the scroll represents Christ's title deed to all the Father promised because of his sacrifice on the cross. So uh, when God has a book, uh, it's not just uh, something to read casually and to uh, kind of uh, uh, have uh, uh, things that are unimportant in it. In God's book, everything is important. <laughs> Every word is important. God doesn't put any frivolous things in his book. Well, we have a book. It doesn't look like a scroll. Uh, we have a book that has pages. And uh, this book, uh, God has preserved for us, written uh, 
the New Testament written 2,000 years ago and the Old Testament some uh, maybe 3,500 years ago, parts of it, uh, and we have it in our hands. Now, this is God's book, and uh, God has opened the seals, and he will open these seals, we'll see today. Uh, this book is open. You can read what's there. You can do it. And uh, we have the, the, uh, this book has everything in it God wants us to know. If he wanted us to know something else, he would have put it in the book. Uh, people go look in other places for things. And they say, boy, I found this. And somebody wrote a book. And uh, they say, wow, this is a great book. It's only as great as it agrees with this book. And uh, you have to be careful with other books. I have a library full of books, and I read books and study other books, but you always compare it to this book. If it doesn't agree with this book, then it's not true. It has to agree with this book. Because this is God's word. This is what he wants us to know. And if somebody tells you, boy, I've, I've, I had this dream and I found this other thing, and uh, this is, this is uh, something new and different, I know... Uh, uh, God, God's the book is it's finished. This is a closed book as far as being written more into it. So everything God wants us to know is in this book. Now God knows a lot more than what's in this book. Uh, but he picked out of all the things he knows. You know, volumes of things could be written. He condensed it into this book. And uh, this is what he wants us to know. And uh, he opens the book by the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. You can know what's in this book. That's why we come today. That's why we're here. Pastor is a great Bible preacher and a great Bible teacher. And if you don't get anything when you come to this church, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're not hearing or you're not uh, listening or you don't want to hear, uh, something's wrong there because it's given out what's in this book. And so we come to sit on the edge of our seat and to say, what is it God wants me to know today? Because this is what he wants us to know. Now, nobody knows it all. Uh, you can study it and study it and study it, and we should. Uh, but uh, nobody knows it all, but even a child can understand the word of God. Uh, Brother Dave just gave his testimony at six years old. He understood he was lost. Now, where does that come from, you see? Well, it comes from conviction from the Word of God. It comes from this book. Uh, I want to be saved. Where does that come from? Well, that means you're lost. You need to be saved. You need to have, have a way of salvation. You want to, get, uh, you want to be in heaven one day. Where does that come from? It comes from this book. Even a child can know. And yet, uh, the smartest man in the world can't know it all. But we ought to be trying to know more every day. Read the Bible every day. Don't miss, don't miss a day. You miss a day, then you miss another day, and then you miss another. Have you ever been there? Then you miss another. You say, well, now, I haven't read for a while. Uh, that's, not a, that's not a good thing, you see, because we need to open the book. So they're talking about here opening the book, opening this book that God has in his hand, and uh, it's going to tell the things that uh, John eventually wrote down here. Kind of amazing, isn't it? And so the book, very important. Uh, God uh, removed the seals. Uh, various dramatic events take place on the earth. And so uh, as, uh, as this is done, uh, they open a seal, and uh, this is... This is uh, judgment. Of course, we're talking about here now the tribulation period, uh, the seven years of tribulation. Uh, what's the next event in God's timetable? What do you think, huh? The rapture of the church. That's what we're looking forward. We're looking forward to Christ uh, coming, uh, the voice, we'll hear the voice, and uh, the trumpet, and then Jesus will come out of the clouds, it says. He went up into the clouds, and he said this same Jesus will come in like manner as you have seen him go. And so we expect him to come out of the clouds and uh, appear visually, bodily, as we see him go. Uh, that's what we expect. 
And uh, that's the next event. Uh, nothing, nothing has to happen before. You say all these things happen in Israel. It's a, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this, could be, this could be quite a uh, cataclysmic event, what's happening today. I mean today. Uh, they're meeting together to decide what they're going to do. And uh, uh, they could do nothing, or they could uh, uh, start World War III today. Right, right. I mean, it's it's that close, and so uh, a lot of things happening. But none of that has to happen. Some people say, "Well, yeah, Israel's there, and they've got the thing for the for the uh, temple, and all these things taking place." Well, those are interesting, but you know, it may be another thousand years. We don't know. Could be this afternoon. Could be before we get out of church. You know, uh, that's the next thing. The rapture of the church. That means if you're saved. Uh, you'll meet Jesus in the air. He's coming, and we'll meet him in the air, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And the Bible says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So after that, after that rapture, for the next seven years after the rapture of the church, we're out of here. Uh, so we aren't going to go through any of these things uh, that we're reading about. All this scroll is going to be opened up and these judgments are going to be poured out upon the earth and uh, all that's going to be taking place. Where are we going to be? Uh, we're going to be with Jesus. And so shall you ever be with the Lord. All right? And so you don't have to fear uh, if you're saved. Get saved just like Brother Dave did when he was six years old. Isn't that amazing? And uh, six years old. So uh, that's, that's a great testimony and uh, settled. Do you ever doubt your salvation since then? Yeah, but you're saved, amen, on your way. And so make sure you're saved. Say, well, I, I made a profession of faith one time, and, but at night I worry about it. Well, you ought to get it settled. Make sure you got it settled because we'll be with Jesus. And so as we read this, as we study through the rest of the, the book here, it's all, we're watching it with Jesus. Say, where, where are we going to be? Well, wherever Jesus is. And we'll see that even in this, this chapter here. And so that's the picture. You got the picture? Uh, and I want to just reassure you on those things. Then uh, the seventh seal introduces the trumpets. Uh, these, there's three sets of judgments here that we'll be studying in the next couple of chapters. You got the seals, seven seals, and then the trumpets, and then uh, the... Uh, <coughs> The vials or the bowls uh, poured out judgment upon the earth. And uh, significant in that, the seventh seal introduces the trumpets, and the seventh trumpet introduces the vials or the bowls. Uh, three series of judgment. And uh, then I uh, just threw some things in there. There's some parentheses. Some of these chapters, chapter 7, 10 through 15, 17 through and 18, they're not. They're not uh, uh, <coughs> part of the whole series of things, just kind of kind of uh, parentheses put in uh, to give us information. And so we'll be looking at those things. All right? Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you that you love us. Bless now as we look at this chapter 5. And Lord, we're looking at you, and we're seeing you being praised and worshipped. And Lord, uh, we need to worship you also. And Lord, we ought to be worshipping you now. Because that's what we will do for all eternity. We'll be praising you. And so help us to give a little insight here today and check our worship life, our praising, that uh, we are not negative all the time, but we can be positive, trusting you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know how many of you could be negative today, beautiful weather. Boy, it's beautiful out there. Brother Love said they're planting corn. I haven't seen them planting corn anywhere. I guess I haven't been out in the country much already planting corn and he said his sweet corn's already up this high so we'll be going to his house for roasting ears i guess and uh, uh corn on the cob or whatever you call it and uh, that'll be good but uh that's uh, what i remember about uh about may up and uh, we're a month later up in ohio and uh uh so about may 10th my dad said never plant corn before may 10th of course, they got new varieties now. I think they can do it more. But uh, 
And so I get out of school and run out, go change clothes and run out to the field. And uh, there they are planting corn. That's my memory of go the last day of school. I'm free. And then I go out there and work. Amen. That'd be a good thing. <laughs> that's what you get to do, all right? But that's good. I, I loved it, the whole thing. All right, so uh, here we have four reasons why we should worship worship God uh, in this chapter and see if we can find that and, uh, and look through these things today. Number one, because of who he is. Who is he? Well, we find here in verse number five, it says, and one of the elders saith unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed upon the book to loose the seven seals uh, thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, uh, which are the seven spirits of God, uh, which sent forth into all the earth. So there we find three things about who Jesus is. Uh, Jesus is uh, the, uh, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And... Uh, Look clear back in Genesis chapter 49, and you see there uh, when Jacob's about to die. That's right at the end of Genesis. Chapter 50 is the last chapter of Genesis. And uh, Jacob is uh, uh, speaking about each of his sons and kind of describing them and some of the things they've done, some of the things we don't understand, but they, uh, they were, uh, he's picking them out and saying, this is who you are. Well, Judah, uh, he said this about Judah. In chapter 49, verses 8 through 10, it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is, the li is a, a lion's whelp. And the prey, my son, thou art uh, going up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, as an old lion, who shall rouse him up. And the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and until him shall the gathering of the people be. And so we find here that that's a prophecy, that's a promise that God has given to the tribe of Judah, that Jesus would come through the tribe of Judah. And if you read the genealogies in Matthew and and, uh, and Luke, you'll find that, uh, yes, Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And it was a little unusual because he would be a priest and the priest would come from Levi. And uh, so uh, the, uh, that he came from the tribe of Judah was a little unusual, but that's what God has promised and how God used it. And so when it says the line of the tribe of Judah, that's Jesus. And so he is, the, he is the Messiah. He is the promised one. He is the one that God would send. And then we have the root of David. And you can find this several places in the Bible. But in Isaiah chapter, one and verse, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, we looked at that last week and, uh, and found there uh, that, uh, that, that uh, we find him in, in chapter 11 of Isaiah. Let me look at that. I want to read verse 2 also. Um, chapter 11, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And of course, Jesse is David's father. Uh, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And so uh, that's uh, what we used last week when we talked about the seven spirits of God. But uh, from, from the root of Jesse, the root of David, and uh, that uh, Jesus, the son of David. And so who is Jesus? Well, that's, uh, that's what he is there in, uh, in those chapters. In, in verse 10 of that same chapter, it says, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse and shall stand for an ensign of the people as to it shall uh, the Gentiles seek 
and his wrists shall be glorious. And so again, it uses that, that uh, uh, root of Jesse, the root of David, and that's what we find right there in chapter 5 of, uh, of Revelation. He's also the Lamb of God. Uh, <laughs> I love the story in uh, Genesis chapter 22 uh, about uh, uh, God telling uh, uh, Abraham to take his son, his only son Isaac, and to take him and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. Uh, it's a horrendous story when you just think about the original command. But Abraham went without, without any uh, question. He just said it. He got up in the morning and they left. And as they were going, uh, Isaac uh, said to his father, he said, uh, we have a fire and I'm carrying the wood, but where's the lamb for the offering? And Abraham said, uh, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. In verse 8, uh, it says, uh, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now that uh, reflexive pronoun there, uh, provide himself, could have just said, God will provide a sacrifice. And uh, it almost means the same thing. Because God did provide a sacrifice. They looked and there was a ram caught in a thicket. But he said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. God would be the sacrifice for us. Uh, now that day, a ram was there as a, as a substitute or a, a picture of what would happen. But God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Isn't that a great, isn't that a great verse? I mean, I, every time I read that, it's just a tremendous, a tremendous verse. Because uh, God died for us. He died in our place. He didn't uh, send someone else to die. He died for us. Isn't that, uh, it's beyond comprehension uh, that he would do that. And so he's the lamb. Of course, John <laughs> the Baptist uh, hadn't met Jesus <clears throat> And he had been preaching, and he heard that there was uh, one that was also preaching, and he wouldn't know who he was. And so uh, he sent his men to, to, see, uh, to see who he was, and they came back and said, we believe he's the Messiah. And when uh, John saw him coming, there in John chapter 1 and verse 29, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. There again, it's the the L, the... Uh, Lamb, the Gale there is capitalized, and we have that same thing here in uh, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5. Uh, so that's a great thing, isn't it? And uh, so who is he? Well, he deserves to be worshipped because of who he is. Uh, secondly, uh, he, he deserves uh, to be uh, worshipped because of where he is. And uh, so we see here in verse 6 of uh, Revelation chapter 5. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four, and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood the Lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth unto all the earth. And so, where is He? Well, He's in the midst of the throne. Uh, he's He's there, uh, right at the throne of of God the Father. Uh, we're all around Him. I believe these elders represent all the saved people that are there. Remember, in the rapture, we go up to meet the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Well, so where Jesus is, that's where we are. Say, where are we going to be? Well, we're going to be where Jesus is. That's, that's where we're going to be. I uh, say, where's that going to take place? Well, I don't know exactly where that's going to be. Uh, uh, wherever heaven is or uh, where that throne is, that's where, that's where we'll be. But one thing we know about it, we'll be where Jesus is. And so we're around the throne, there's, there's the Lamb, there's Jesus Christ, and uh, he's in the midst of all these around him. And uh, so that's where he is. Christ is in heaven. Uh, when, uh, in, when he ascended, the ascension there in Acts chapter 
uh, 1, verses 10 and 11. It says that while they looked, they were standing there with Jesus, and the angels appeared there with them. And uh, they, as they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, all of a sudden he started going up. That'd be a little unusual, wouldn't it? And uh, so they're gazing. Well, wouldn't you be gazing? I mean, you're, you're starstruck. You're looking and saying, well, there, there he goes. And you watch as he goes up. And uh, they said, uh, as they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which, said in the, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? So he, well, they went up. <clears throat> And uh, went through the clouds. So he disappeared through the clouds. Well, what would you do? Well, you're expecting something else to happen, I guess. You're saying, you're just kind of waiting for what's going to happen next. You say, well, we just saw this unusual thing happen. And we're watching and we're standing there kind of just staring at that cloud, that place where Jesus went through. And he says, so why stand here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you to heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And so we expect one day uh, he'll come back out of the clouds and come back down to earth. That's what we expect. And that's what the Bible says will happen. And so, as this says, in like manner as you have seen him go. So, Jesus went to heaven, and he'll be coming back uh, at the end of these seven years. At the end of this terrible tribulation here upon the earth, Jesus will come back to earth. And uh, we'll fight the battle of Armageddon. We'll see those things as we go on through. Uh, Christ is at the throne. So, there he is in the midst of the throne. And uh, he's right there with God the Father, of course, uh, there at that time. And uh, then thirdly, <coughs> why should we worship God? Because of, because of what he does. So we have this, this uh, a portion here, and it says in uh, verse 9, and they sung a new song. Uh, <coughs> can you imagine what the singing would be like? We have great singing here. Uh, a lot of great music, talented musicians. Uh, but everybody will be singing in heaven. Uh, I guess, I don't know if we get tuned up or we just sing bad. I don't know. It seems like we'll sing good, I guess. I don't know. But uh, it'll sound good. And so it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Thou wast slain, and thou hast redeemed us to God. By the blood out of every kindred and every tongue and, uh, and people and nation. So uh, that's, uh, that's the song. And I kind of broke that down a little bit. Uh, what kinds of songs do we sing? Well, uh, there's all kinds of good Christian songs. Uh, songs that, that honor God. And uh, they have all different kinds. It says there, uh, they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy. And so that's a kind of a worship song, a singing uh, Worthy is the Lamb and those kind of songs, worshiping God and to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God. Well, that's a, that'd be a gospel song, being redeemed. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, you know, and uh, all those good old gospel songs talking about our salvation. And we were brought up on those they, they just ring true uh, to our heart. And then it says, um, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That sounds like a, uh, Brother Ogle, that sounds like a missionary song, doesn't it? Uh, to every tongue and people and nation. And so, uh, especially during missionary conference, we sing missionary songs and uh, send the light and uh, 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 all those different kinds of songs that are missionary songs. And out of every kindred. And then uh, it says, um, verse 10, And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And so we see who we are before God, a devotional type of song. And then uh, we shall reign on the earth, a uh, prophetic 
song that uh, we'll one day be with him. Uh, most of the gospel songs, the last verse talks about uh, Jesus coming back in heaven. Uh, if you notice, uh, you sing, uh, sing the song as it talks about where we are today. The last verse usually uh, talks about uh, where we're going to be. That's what we're studying here. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? And so uh, this is a, just kind of a brief thing. You can study that more and see the things that we have. And so uh, then we have uh, uh, I, uh, number four. Number four, good. Uh, because of what he has. Okay, what, what he has. What does Jesus have? Well, uh, he has all power. Uh, look at verse number 11. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. How much is 10,000 times 10,000? Huh? Well, uh, you remember your scientific notation. You remember that? Maybe not, huh? But uh, 10,000 has four zeros. And so if you, uh, that's 10 to the fourth, and then you have another 10 to the fourth, that's 10 to the eighth. So that's eight zeros, all right? So what's eight zeros? Well, that's 100,000, or 100 million, excuse me, 100 million. And so uh, millions of millions, and I think it's meant to say that's a lot, amen? And the thousands of thousands. And the saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I guess you could get a few sermons out of that. But he has all power, all power. And uh, that, that's the verse we just quoted. But in, in the Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, uh, it's my life verse, uh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. I just saw out there on, the, on one of the bricks this morning, Brother, Brother Johnny, is that your life verse? I didn't know that. I just saw it this morning as I walked in. I said, well, there, that's my verse. You stole my verse, all right? But uh, uh, all power is given to him in heaven and earth. And uh, that's uh, the power of God. There's nothing God cannot do. We think of this uh, turmoil going on over there in Israel right now. Uh, uh, God's in control. And even though we have all kinds of bombs and all kinds of things, uh, very, very small power compared to God's power. God's power is beyond, beyond our comprehension. Uh, you think of the power of the wind. <clears throat> and we just had it here in this town a few months ago. Uh, just did all kinds of damage. Uh, nobody can control that. The power of God. The power of a flood. Uh, you see the rushing water of a flood. It's, it's scary. You look and see what it's doing. It, the water power. It's a, a tremendous of power. And God has all power. He's in control of all those things. And so we trust him. This situation, <clears throat> uh, we don't need to worry about it. Uh, uh, if you're saved, the worst that can happen is we'd be with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> And uh, so, yes, there's some worry and concern, but no, we trust God. Trust God in this. Uh, and uh, then he has all strength. That Jesus beheld them and said unto them, men and with men this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. All things. And so, yeah, with us, we can't figure out things, but God has all strength. Uh, he receives all praise. And... Uh, it says there in, the, in the verse, verse 12, verse, verse 13, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. <laughs> That's what we should say. I agree with that. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And so we put our faith in him. Jesus is worthy to be worshipped, worthy to be praised. 
and we ought to do it more. We get concerned about our own lives, and that's understandable. But take time to praise the Lord. Thank God for who he is and where he is and what he's doing, what he has, and that he's worthy to be worshipped. I hope you can do that. Uh, that's what we'll be doing uh, for all eternity. And so we ought to get started now. Amen. Don't let a day go past but what you say. Thank you, Lord, for the day. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you love us today. Bless in the coming service. Be with Pastor. Be with the message. Be with our hearts. Lord, help us to open our hearts to you. We know you'll speak to us. So, Lord, uh, uh, help us to listen. And, Lord, may your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.